in this lecture we are going to talk about the solution methodology to be used for finding out the solution for one dimensional conduction equation without internal heat generation under steady conditions this solution we are going to obtain using the boundary conditions the use of boundary condition followed by the solution and then we will try to put this solution into a form that methodology is called as electrical analogy and then we can apply this electrical analogy to more complex systems in order to solve the problems of composite systems in the previous lectures we have discussed about the generalized conduction equation and the boundary condition we are going to use these generalized equations and boundary conditions in order to solve this particular case of one dimensional conduction so let us start we are going to start with some introductory notes uh, then i'll give you the solution methodology for one dimensional conduction equation in a plane wall system then we'll develop a analogy between electrical flow and heat flow for this particular one dimensional conduction situation then we'll extend that analogy for composite system and then we'll introduce a very important concept of overall heat transfer coefficient and the contact thermal resistance so this is going to be the journey for today's lecture myself professor nitin elbirud working in sandeep institute of engineering and management and i got 20 years of experience and my domain expertise in mechanical engineering one dimensional steady state conduction will discuss in a one dimensional system the temperature gradient whatever is the temperature variation is there whatever is the gradient is there that exists along single coordinate direction maybe x direction y direction z direction but for simplicity we are assuming all that directions as x directions and heat transfer occurs exclusively in that single direction only this system is characterized by steady state condition if the temperature at each point is independent of time we can say that this one dimensional system is also under steady condition if the temperature is independent of time if the rate of heat transfer is not varying with respect to time then those systems can be called as steady conditions already we are aware of this the solution of this one dimensional heat transfer conduction problem with steady state with of course no internal heat generation is to be obtained in this particular lecture so let us start with the basic idea the plane wall we are going to find out the solution for cartesian coordinate system for one dimensional conduction in plane wall the temperature is the function of x coordinate only and the heat is transferred exclusively in this direction and the heat transfer occurs in this fashion you can see this is a plane wall it is in contact with a uh, fluid whose temperature is t infinity 1 on the one side on this side the heat transfer coefficient is h1 because of this contact the surface of this uh, solid object is now maintained at a constant temperature of ts1 then of course as this is a solid the mode of heat transfer through this solid is going to be conduction and at the other end we are getting another constant temperature say ts2 because the other side is also in contact with some other fluid with of course a lower temperature t infinity 2 and heat transfer coefficient of h2 the dimensions of the wall are ranging from 0 x is equal to 0 to x is equal to l so this is the problem in our hand now this is how the heat transfer occurs by convection from the hot fluid by conduction through the wall and by convection from the other surface of the wall to the second fluid for steady state condition with no energy source within the wall there is no internal heat generation and the heat equation the three dimensional heat conduction equation for one dimensional form will be like this already you have seen this d square t upon dx square is equal to 0 now this equation represents this particular situation of the plane wall 
that the temperature is only the function of x there is no internal heat generation and the system is under steady condition now as usual we have to find out the solution the methodology as used in the last lecture i told you that we need to integrate this particular equation to get the temperature gradient equation so integration gives us dt upon dx is equal to c1 then another integration in order to get the general solution and that general solution would be temperature is equal to c1x plus c2 where c1 and c2 are the random arbitrary constants of integration process then of course the next step is as usual to apply the boundary conditions so what are the boundary conditions in our head at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to l we are having the boundary condition of first kind that is the temperatures are known to obtain the constant of integration c1 and c2 so what are the boundary conditions at temperature at x is equal to 0 is ts1 you can recall the last sketch and temperature at x is equal to l is ts2 so we got these two boundary conditions let us substitute it so if you substitute that temperature at x is equal to 0 is equal to ts1 in this equation so x is equal to 0 means this term will become 0 and this term will become ts1 and this term will remain as it is so from if you substitute t is equal to uh, sorry x is equal to 0 in this case you will get c2 is equal to ts1 so let us substitute so applying the first boundary condition x is equal to 0 in the general solution 1.16 it follows that ts1 is equal to c2 similarly if you substitute the second boundary condition that is at x is equal to l uh, temperature is equal to ts2 so if you substitute that you will get this equation ts2 c1 l plus c2 if we rearrange the term c1 l plus uh, ts1 so uh, sorry if, if you put uh, c2 is equal, uh, c2 is already known to us that is ts1 so if you put sub uh, c2 is equal to ts1 you will get this now rearranging these terms in terms of c2 sorry c1 you will get ts1 minus sorry ts2 minus ts1 divided by l is equal to c1 now we got values of c1 as well as values of c2 now what is our next rule is to substitute these values of c1 and c2 in the temperature gradient equation and temperature distribution equation so you can see that c1 which is equal to ts2 minus ts1 upon l where ts2 is a constant ts1 is a constant and l is a constant it means c1 is a constant it means that the temperature gradient in this plane wall is going to be a constant whose value is equal to c1 and that c1 is equal to ts2 minus ts1 divided by l in the similar way temperature distribution in the wall can be obtained by this equation that temperature at any point x is equal to c1 c1 means this particular term into x plus c2 so in that equation you can put any value of x and you can find out the temperature at that particular point so this we are going to do in the next slide so substituting the values of c1 and c2 into general solution and the temperature distribution will become this this equation t is equal to that temperature at x is equal to ts2 minus ts1 x upon l plus ts1 so you can put any value of x in this up from 0 ranging from 0 to l to get the value of temperature at that particular point using this equation now from this result it is evident that for a given problem the temperature varies linearly with x this is the equation of a straight line as i already told you that there is linear variation in the temperature temperature gradient is constant now we can use fourier's law that is qx that is the rate of heat transfer is equal to minus k dt by dx now what we need in this fourier's law in order to find out the value of heat transfer rate is the temperature gradient dt upon dx and this dt of dx can be obtained by using the previous equation that is dt upon dx is equal to c1 in this case and c1 is equal to ts2 minus ts1 upon l so substituting all these values in this equation you will get temperature uh, sorry rate of heat transfer is equal to k upon l in bracket ts1 minus ts2 so this is our final equation from this equation we can write down the equation for heat flux also heat flux is rate of heat transfer per unit area so if you take this area on this side it will become the equation for heat flux and it will be kl upon ts1 uh, multiplied by ts1 minus ts2 okay now these equations 1.20 and 1.21 indicates that both the heat rate and heat flux are constant and they are independent of the direction so these values are remaining constant in a plain wall situation so this you have to remember so what we have got now is the equation for finding out the temperature distribution and equation for finding out the heat flux or heat flow rate 
through the plane wall in one dimensional steady state conduction situation now we can use this for use uh, developing a uh, analogy so let us do it we can use this uh, uh, finding whatever uh, in the previous slide and uh, that finding can be used for finding out the uh, analogy between the electrical flow and plane wall so analogy between heat diffusion and electrical charge is there so let us see what is this analogy see what is happening if there is difference in temperature pay attention if there is a difference in temperature across any substance then heat is going to flow through it and the substance is going to offer some resistance for the heat to flow i am repeating my sentence for a electrical circuit because of the potential difference current flows and the conductor material offers some resistance for the flow of current now let us put it in words so we can analog uh, we can develop analogy and that analogy will be will in this fashion rate of heat transfer is equivalent to electrical current both are flows temperature difference is corresponding to voltage difference both are the potential differences because of potential difference voltage the current flows because of the temperature difference the heat flows so heat is analog heat flow is analogous to current and temperature difference is analogous to voltage difference or the voltage and in the same way thermal resistance is analogous to electrical resistance now we know that the electrical current electrical voltage and electrical resistance all these three terms are having a relation and that relation is given by ohms law so what is that ohms law electrical resistance as a ratio of driving potential voltage to the corresponding transfer rate is expressed through ohms law in this fashion so what is electrical resistance electrical resistance is always in a resistive circuit equal to the potential difference responsible for the current to flow divided by the flow of that current i so delta e or delta v divided by i or the potential difference divided by electrical current is equal to electrical resistance so this is how we can find out so we can as we already got the analogy let us use that analogy for finding out the term called as thermal resistance so if you can develop a similar kind of term like electrical resistance for a thermal circuit then we can call that term as a thermal resistance and that re resistance is going to be the ratio of potential difference that is in this case temperature difference to the corresponding transfer rate in this case it is heat transfer rate so we can write in the same fashion for electric uh, ele uh, like electrical resistance we can write down a thermal resistance for conduction is always equal to delta t that is the temperature difference divided by the heat flow rate in that particular situation so this is the basic definition of a electrical resistance that is a resistance electrically or oh, sorry thermal resistance is always equal to the temperature difference divided by the heat flux or heat sorry not heat flux it is heat flow rate temperature difference divided by heat flow rate is equal to the thermal resistance now in the previous slide we already got the equation for qx so if you use that equation 1.2 that is this ka upon l ts1 minus ts2 is equal to qs and if you rearrange these terms like this ts1 minus ts2 divided by qx so if you rearrange this term what will get this particular term is going to get inverted and you will get that is equal to the thermal resistance for this plane wall and we can write it in this fashion the thermal resistance for conduction which is equal to ts1 minus ts2 divided by qx and from this equation is equal to l upon ka so thermal resistance for conduction in a plane wall can be obtained using a simple equation that is l upon ka where l is the thickness of that medium k is the thermal conductivity of the medium and a is the area perpendicular to the direction of heat flow so if you use this particular simple equation we can find out the thermal resistance for the conduction once you know the thermal resistance you can use this particular equation okay temperature difference is known thermal resistance is calculated by using this particular thing we can use this for finding out the rate of heat transfer so this is how we can do the reverse calculations if it is required now we can 
extend this analogy for convection also like in the same fashion consider convection heat transfer from a solid surface of area a and temperature of the surface is ts and the fluid is having temperature t infinity and the convection heat transfer coefficient is h now newton's law of the uh, newton's law of cooling can be written for this convection process uh, let us see this convection process first the temperature of the surface is ts it is losing the heat by convection to a fluid whose temperature is t infinity and the heat transfer coefficient is between them is h so if you write down the newton's law of cooling q is equal to h as into ts minus t infinity now go back to the basic definition of thermal resistance basic definition of thermal resistance is temperature difference divided by the heat transfer rate so if you rearrange this equation in that fashion you will get the thermal resistance for convection is equal to temperature difference divided by q and that is equal to 1 upon ha so thermal resistance for a convective application can be calculated using a very simple form 1 upon ha now what we got we got two equations now one equation is for finding out a conduction resistance for a plane wall the second equation is for finding out a convection resistance for any any type of situation so it is 1 upon ha now this logic can be extended further for complex systems like composites so let us do it so if you are having uh, multiple layers in a system that is a one dimension it flow through a plane wall of thermal conductivity can thickness l and that is exposed to convection on the both the sides of the fluid where the heat transfer coefficients are h1 and h2 respectively so let us see this you can recall this this was the first sketch which i have shown in the beginning of this lecture that is temperature of this fluid is t infinity 1 temperature of the this side of surface is ts1 ts2 and t infinity 2 and they are reducing so convection followed by conduction followed by convection are the modes of heat transfer and under steady test situation whatever is the convection here same rate of conduction should, shall be there through the system and same rate of convection shall be there on the other side of the wall so if you put it in the words we can say that rate of conduction convection into the wall on the left hand side is equal to rate of heat conduction through the wall and rate of heat conduction convection from the wall on the right hand side so this equation is valid so we can write down this equation in mathematical terms we are already having this uh, conduction convection can be written in using the newton's law of cooling conduction can be written by using the fourier's law of conduction same way we can write the heat of rate of heat transfer is equal to h1 into a into the temperature difference for this side that is t infinity 1 and ts1 then the temperature difference ts1 minus ts2 into ka upon l that is the rate of heat transfer for a plane wall already you have derived that expression and then rate of heat convection from the wall is this so this is once again using the neutral slump so if we rearrange the terms we'll get like this i'm just putting it in terms of delta t divided by something delta t divided by something delta t divided by something and we have already defined this q delta t divided by q delta t divided by q delta t divided by q as thermal resistance so all these values in the denominator three values are the thermal resistances so this represents the thermal resistance for convection on the right hand side this represents the convective resistance on the sorry uh, left hand side and this is for right hand side and this is the conduction resistance for that plane wall so if you rearrange the terms we'll get it is now if you combine them if you consider that total heat transfer that is from t infinity 1 temperature to t infinity 2 temperature under steady conditions if you, you can write down this simple equation in this fashion overall temperature difference we can write t infinity to 1 minus t infinity 2 divided by total thermal resistance instead of writing down the individual thermal resistances now because individual resistances are for individual temperature differences now we are talking about the total temperature difference so it will be replaced by total thermal resistance and that is what is the electrical analogy for the components so t infinity 1 minus t infinity 2 that is the overall temperature difference divided by overall resistance now you may ask me how to find out this overall heat transfer or overall thermal resistance simply in this case the heat transfer rate is constant and from this t infinity 1 to ts1 the same rate same rate from ts1 to ts2 same rate is there from t so we can consider there are three resistances this is for convection this is for conduction this is for convection on these three resistances the current flow is same in this case i can say heat flow is same 
the potential difference is different and we can thus we can use that electric analogy once again and we can say that there are three resistances in series three thermal resistances in series to each resistance same heat flow is there same heat flow is there through each resistance and the resi each resistance is having separate potential difference for example the potential difference for the first resistance is t infinity 1 minus ts1 for second resistance it is ts1 minus ts2 for the third resistance it is ts2 minus t infinity so this is the potential difference but the current that is in this uh, heat flow i can say heat transfer rate is constant through all the resistances so in this same logic is applicable uh, like the electrical current and we can say that these resistances are in series okay so we can add the three resistances and we'll get the total value of thermal resistance you can use this for total thermal resistance here in the electrical circuits also when the resistances are in series we are calculating the equivalent resistance by adding the individual resistances as in this case we have got series resistances we can use the same logic and we can add the thermal resistances to get the total thermal resistance of the circuit so this is as simple as that now we can uh, general uh, generalize this equation in a generalized way we can write this the rate of heat transfer is equal to ti minus tj ti means the uh, one side temperature difference and tj is the other side temperature difference so uh, this ti minus tj term will represent the total temperature difference which is there in this case and divided by the total thermal resistance as I already told you if the resistances are in series then we have to add them to find out the total resistance for this series now you may be having question what if if they are parallel same logic how we are finding out the electrical uh, total uh, equivalent resistance of electrical resistances when they are in parallel same we are finding out r equivalent uh, the equation is simple 1 upon r equivalent is equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 where r equivalent is the equivalent total uh, total thermal uh, total electrical resistance for the circuit and r1 and r2 are those two resistances which are parallel to each other so if you are having a situation in which thermal resistances are to be designated as parallel resistances then we can use the same equation for finding out the total thermal resistance let us we'll see that in the next slide also so this is how uh, we can more elaborate this you can see there are now three layers and each layer is offering some resistance for the heat flow the heat rate of heat transfer through each layer and through each this convection is same and that's why all the resistances are taken into series now you can see this sketch very clearly all the resistances are shown offered and this is how we can calculate them and we can add them to find out the total thermal resistance and then using this total thermal resistance we can find out the rate of heat transfer through this system so this complex system can be simply converted into this simplified form by using the concept of electrical analogy and we have to just ensure that we are getting the correct value of the total thermal resistance so this already i explained so i'm just not going to repeat so we can express this heat transfer rate in this fashion t infinity 1 from this equation t infinity 1 minus t infinity 2 ti minus tj and divided by the total thermal resistance all the resistances are in series so i'm just adding them there are five resistances five resistances are added three of them are conduction two and resistances are for convection so if you add them i'll get the total thermal resistance i'm getting just putting in all those values in this equation to get the heat transfer rate so although this situation seems to be very complex with the help of electric analogy we can make it a simple problem so equivalent thermal circuit concept is used for more complex systems such as composite wall any number of series and parallel thermal resistances due to layer of different materials now you may ask me sir where uh, this kind of situations are there in practice uh, let us take an example of a uh, uh, wall of your house how many layers are there there is outside layer of plaster then inside the there in between there there is brick layer inside the brick in in between brick also there is some cement layers are there okay and then there inside plaster layer if you consider the paint layer then outside paint and inside paints are there so all these layers when you are trying to find out what is the heat gain by the solar energy or some other form of energy into these type of systems we have to consider these resistances in series and parallel 
Similarly, the, uh, we can take the example of uh, industrial furnaces. In the industrial furnaces or ovens, they they are insulated. So inside there is some uh, inner wall is made up of some metal which can withstand the temperature from the inner side. Then in between the, there is some insulation and outside there is a protective metallic or plastic whatever coating is there. And they are uh, painted with some uh, color so that the heat losses can be minimized like that. So if such type of situation is there in order to find out the rate of heat transfer through such type of situation, we can use this electric analogy in this situation because most of the time we are having the information about the inside fluid temperature and outside fluid temperature but the other temperatures are rarely known to us you cannot directly measure uh, sometimes it is possible to measure the temperature of the surface inner and outside but in between surfaces can you measure the temperature so frequently and so uh, uh, what you call confirm uh, values can you get the values no the answer is no and because of these reasons, it is always better to measure the fluid temperature because authenticity of these values can be uh, established and we can get authentic information about the temperatures and easily we can convert the problem into a composite system problem and can be used. So this is how the logic can be extended for real life situations. Now, uh, the heat transfer rate can be related to temperature difference, resistance across each resistor. For example, this uh, this can be used for finding out the intermediate temperatures. Okay, with the composite system, it is usually convenient to work with overall heat transfer coefficient. Now, uh, one more concept we can uh, I can introduce here is the concept of overall heat transfer coefficient. If such type of complex situation is there, composite system is there, there are multiple resistances are there, so we can convert them in terms of the total thermal resistance and then we can use the logic similar to the Newton's law of cooling and we can write down the equation in this fashion that is the rate of heat transfer is equal to u a into delta t where u represents the overall heat transfer coefficient for that situation a is the surface area and delta t is the overall temperature difference for the situation. So where is delta t is the overall temperature difference and u is the overall heat transfer coefficient. It is similar to h. Now if we rearrange this term, the above equation, we can say that u a is equal to 1 upon r total because delta t upon q x, delta t is total temperature difference upon q x is equal to 1 upon one upon r total so you uh, sorry uh, qx upon delta t is equal to one upon r total and that's why ua is equal to one upon r total hence for the composite wall of the last figure we can say that u is equal to one upon r total into a i'm taking this a on this side and the equation will become like this the a is going to get cancelled from each of the terms and it is going to get bigger simple so you can find out the value of overall heat transfer coefficient now where is the application of such type of overall heat transfer coefficient why it is expressed uh, in terms of overall heat transfer coefficient this particular equation we are going to use in the analysis of heat exchangers because in heat exchanger there are multiple modes of heat transfer involved simultaneously acting and in such situation it is always better to express it in terms of a single term and this single term is overall heat transfer coefficient so we are expected to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient by finding out the dimensions of the heat exchangers in general we can write always the total thermal resistance is equal to delta t upon q and that is equal to 1 upon u a composite walls may also be characterized by series and parallel configuration as shown in figure now i'll just give some information about the parallel configuration now these two resistances you can see now these two objects you can see whatever is the rate of heat flow from this layer this layer is at same uh, this layer is at same temperature and this layer is also at some constant temperature so here and here the temperatures are same but the rate of heat flow because of the different values of conductivity through this material the rate of heat flow from this wall is different and the rate of heat flow from this part is different and that's why as the rate of heat flow is getting divided when there are multiple paths for the heat flow the heat flow is taking place in two paths here and then when there are multiple paths of the heat transfer between the same temperature difference as i told you that is the temperature difference here and here the temperatures are same the temperature difference is same but the paths are multiple the resistances are to be considered in parallel and that's why the resistance of this 
f and g you can see here it is taken in parallel and this is how we can add them rate of a transfer from this layer plus this layer is equal to the total rate of a transfer and you can write it down in terms of this and then of course as i told you all earlier there also we have to find out the equivalent resistance for these two as 1 upon equivalent of these two is equal to 1 upon this plus 1 upon this and you will get the equivalent now once you got the equivalent for these two parallel it can be added into these two series resistances to get the final circuit or otherwise you can make it more complex like this we can have this 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 these three resistances in series and then this this and this these three resistances and series and then we can solve the problem as usual so of course this is going to be more complex initially what we can do we can find out the uh, parallel re equivalent resistance for all the parallel circuits and then consider that equivalent as a series with the other circuit that is going to make the problem more simple now using this uh, electrical analogy we can talk more about some additional resistances now this is what is up till now we have done in a conduction analysis in a composite wall or a plane wall we have assumed that there is perfect contact whenever there is contact between two layers it was assumed that the interface of the two layers is such a perfect that there is no temperature drop across the interface like this the temperature of the interface is t1 and the temperature of this uh, sorry temperature of the layer at this interface is t1 temperature of layer at this interface is t2 and t1 is equal to t2 that is what our assumption was means there was a perfect contact but actually this would be the case when the surfaces are perfectly smooth and they produce a perfect contact each point but in reality however even the flat surfaces that appeared smooth to our eye turn out to be rather rough when examined under microscope as shown in the figure and that's why there is some temperature drop always at the contacts okay and this temperature drop is due to a resistance and that resistance is called as thermal contact resistance or contact thermal resistance that is at if the surface is microscopically rough no matter how smooth it is appears to be then there is presence of some thermal contact resistance when two such surfaces are placed against each other the peaks will form a good material contact but the valleys will form a walls filled with air normally there are peaks and valleys on the surfaces so there is material to material contact in the peaks and the valleys are filled with air and air is a bad conductor of heat already we have seen that air is having a very low thermal conductivity gas and that's why it is going to increase the resistance and for the heat to flow because of the presence of air into these valleys interface will contain numerous air gaps of varying sizes and that acts as the insulation because of the lower thermal conductivity of air thus the interface offers some resistance for the heat transfer and this resistance per unit surface area is called as thermal contact resistance and given by simple equation t1 minus t2 that is the temperature drop across this divided by the heat flux or the rate of heat transfer at that position you'll get the total thermal resistance per unit surface area for solids whose thermal conductivity are exceeds than the interfacial fluids the contact resistance may be reduced by increasing the contact area by contact pass and this can be achieved by increasing the joint pressure or by reducing the roughness of the melting surface not always possible in practice that but if it is possible that we can increase the pressure and because of increase of the pressure the metal to metal or metal to metal contact will increase the air gaps are going to get reduced and this will give us a reduction in the temperature drop and we can further reduce the temperature uh, re re reduce the roughness for of the melting surfaces and thus we can reduce the contact resistance the co contact resistance may also be reduced by selecting a interfacial fluid with large thermal conductor sometimes when it is really essential that we are interested in reducing the heat transfer because of the contact resistance then we can or we are interested in reducing this uh, thermal resistance due to contact to substance air level in stop air we can fill that gap with the help of some other fluid whose thermal conductivity is higher so that automatically the thermal resistance offered by the contact is going to be reduced in this respect no fluid 
or a evacuated interface eliminates the conduction across the gap thereby increasing the contact resistance so this is what we have learned in this lecture that is one dimensional conduction in plane wall and the electrical analogy the electrical analogy applicable to the composite system with the help of series and parallel resistances and finally we have got some information about the calculations of the thermal contact resistance we are going to use this for solving some of the numericals in the next to next lecture in the next lecture i am going to talk about the same electrical analogy and the solution of one dimensional conduction problem for other two systems like cylindrical systems and spherical systems so once you got all the solutions then in next to next lecture we'll be discussing uh, the numerical problems so that we can get idea how the problems are re uh, real life problems are solved in practice thank you thank you very much